Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. And I have been knitting and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Today's video is the second episode of my new podcast here on YouTube. And uh, I'm probably gonna say it a few more times. I'm not calling it a vodcast. I know, I know people have strong feelings but I'm just calling it a podcast. If you need to call it something else in your brain, I support you. For me, it's a podcast. Anyway, so this is the second installment of my hopefully weekly podcast. This one is late. <laughs> well, not really late because, you know, I set my own schedule and I do what I want. And, you know, this is just a podcast to, to chat about stuff. So really the timeline is not make or break, but I did originally want to film this earlier in the week and have it uploaded for Tuesday, February 20th. Today's the 21st, um, right? Right. So um, I wanted to have this uploaded on Tuesday the 20th, which meant that I should have filmed it on either Sunday the 18th or Monday the 19th. But I'll tell you what, on Sunday and Monday, my heart was heavy. I just wasn't feeling it. So I didn't do it. I let myself off the hook. You know, it's a fake deadline. It doesn't matter. So I let myself off the, off the hook and uh, here we are. This video should be going live on Thursday, February 22nd. Today is the 21st. So a few days late, but you know, I'm hoping that for the foreseeable future, the podcast will go up on Tuesday mornings. And then if I have the capacity for additional videos during the week, then I'll have uh, different uploads on Thursdays, maybe Saturdays if, you know, I'm just really feeling feeling empowered to film and upload videos during a particular week. Uh, but all that to say, today's episode is a little bit of an outlier in that it's being uploaded on a Thursday when I would like to be consistent uploading on Tuesdays. But, you know, I don't even know what this preamble is for or even if it matters because... At the end of the day, who cares? It doesn't matter. Please pardon Darby scratching herself. Um, it doesn't matter, right? It's, this is, if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. And on Sunday and on Monday of this week, it didn't feel fun, so I didn't do it. And now I'm ready to do it, so I'm doing it. There you go. Uh, so let's get into it. You may be proud to notice a few changes, first of all, a few upgrades from my first episode of the podcast. Number one, I put mascara on. You're welcome. Number two, my lighting is better. Number three, I'm using a microphone. I've had this microphone for a long time. My husband bought it for me, um, but I never use it. Well, I use it a couple times, but typically I don't use it because I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid that I'll wear it and it will like brush against my shirt during filming and then the whole audio will be lost and I won't have known it until it's too late or I'm worried that it will just look ugly, hence why it's on the inside of my sweater as opposed to the outside. Um, because uh, I was telling DJ, if I, if I use the mic, it will look ugly and no one will want to be my friend and they'll think I'm ugly. And he was like, come back down, honey. And I was like, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. So anyway, I'm using the microphone today. Hopefully the audio is like so crisp and clear and you're just like, just blown away and amazed. Um, if you think it sucks, I don't know, let me know and then I can have the leeway to stop facing my fears and stop using the mic and I can just talk to the camera that is my phone. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's get to the point of this whole podcast, which is knitting and not uh, my insecurities. And so we continue. So in last week's episode of the podcast, episode one, I went over several projects with you, so I wanna start this week's podcast with a quick update on some of them. Not all of them, because I didn't work on all of them between last week's episode and this episode, but the ones I did work on, I do wanna update you on. And you might also be proud to notice that I only have one notebook today. I was brave, <laughs> again, and I wrote my notes for today's episode in my knitting journal, which is like a big deal because I get stressed. <laughs> I think the moral of today's episode is I live with anxiety. Anyway, I get stressed to write something in here because it feels like it has to be perfect. And I'm trying to let that go. I'm trying to embrace, you know, the messiness. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be written in stone. I can cross things out. My handwriting doesn't have to look pretty all the time. Um, so I picked a page towards the back of this notebook and this is where I'm having my podcast notes. So you can see my podcast episode two notes right here. 
on page 202 of my knitting journal. And let's start with project updates. So I have in these cubbies back here, several different projects that I've been working on and that I should show you. But now that I'm turning my body to look in the cubbies, I'm realizing that the one that I actually wanna show you is not in the cubbies. It's on the ground under my desk over here. So let me crawl down and grab it. Got it. Okay, so this is my sea glass sweater. Um, I didn't work on this a ton this week, but I did get a few rows in. So I just wanna show you again my progress on it. And I literally got two rows. <laughs> No, three rows. I literally got three rows in this week. So by no means am I, you know, blazing through this thing. Um, but I know that the next time I pick it up, I'm sure that I will knit many more than three rows because this is the kind of project, as I've mentioned before, that that one more row mentality is really, really prevalent with this project. So um, I'm still only a few rows past sleeve separation. You can kind of see here, these are my underarm stitches, only a few rows in. So I still haven't tried this on, but that's the update since last week. Nothing really groundbreaking to report. I haven't had um, like, I don't know, any, any mountaintop experiences or any low valley experiences, meaning I haven't had major accomplishments or milestones. Equally, I haven't had any major setbacks. So that's good, um, but there's the update on my sea glass. I only got a few rows in. The next thing that I wanna update you on is my Lume sweater. And I do think that I put this in here. Yep, this cubby and the one next to it are both full of um, project bags with whips in them. So I got a good amount done on my Lume since last week's episode. I mentioned last week that I wanted to get to sleeve separation and finish the yoke. And I'm so happy to tell you that happened. I accomplished that goal. That was one of my three goals um, that I mentioned at the end of last week's podcast. And I did that. I was able to get the beautiful circular yoke shot, which I'll show you here. I finished the yoke at our family cabin and, uh, since then, I did the short row shaping. On this pattern, the short row shaping takes place after the color work yoke. So you can see here, this is the back of the sweater. You can see that there's a thicker band of that dark purple below the color work than there is here on the front. I tried this on and it fits, or it seems to fit really well. I'll know more, of course, when I have more of the body done but I'm just so pleased with this. I think it's gonna be really, really uh, comfortable and I think it'll get a lot of wear in my wardrobe. So I'm happy with that. Maybe next week I'll be able to show you some more progress on it. But to be honest with you, it's not one of my main goals this week to work on the Lume or the Sea Glass actually. Um, a lot of the work on it was motivated by the Long Dog Yard Princess Bride collection, and that's now come to a close. Orders are done for it. You can't order anymore until Brandy has either leftovers or reopens the collection um, at a future date. So uh, there's not like that fire under my butt to work on these. However, I will say that I am really enjoying working on them when I do. So I don't anticipate that these will just be uh, set aside and forgotten. I uh, think that I'll keep working on them one by one, especially because both of these patterns, the Lume and the Sea Glass, are uh, like very meditative. I don't have to think a lot when I'm working on them because the Lume is now at the stockinette body, so it's just knitting in the round until I get to the hem ribbing. And even then that will just be um, one by one knit purl. And then the Sea Glass sweater, um, there is a little bit more thinking involved because of the color changes every row, but it's all the same stitch. It's all one by one color work. It's, you know, you don't really have to turn your brain on. You don't have to pay attention to the pattern. You just have to look and see what color is next on the next row when you get to it. And then, you know, switch the old color out, bring the new color in and knit your row. So um, I'll be keeping these in rotation, but I don't have necessarily, uh, you know, active goals 
to be working on them or to get to a certain milestone on those patterns um, right now. These are kind of the patterns that are just gonna be when I feel like it and I feel good about that. So there's the update on my sea glass, the update on my Lume. The next update is on my tea room lamb. So I'm gonna cut to past Rachel because uh, I don't have the tea room lamb anymore. I shipped it off to its recipient. It was a commission. So I'll cut to a little clip that I recorded a few days earlier before I shipped it out. And then I'll see you back here to present day Rachel um, in a minute. Hey everybody, so uh, this part of the podcast, I am filming or recording a few days before the actual podcast recording session because I'm about to ship this completed item out to its recipient and I wanted to show it on the podcast before I do so. This is the Tea Room Lamb Pattern by Susan Hickson. It turned out so cute. This is for my friend from high school. She's expecting a baby girl and she commissioned this sweet little lamb. So this is going to be shipped out today, but I wanted to show you on the podcast uh, so you could enjoy the cuteness before it's gone and in someone else's hands. Ta-da! All right, excellent. Welcome back. So now that you are updated on the Tea Room Lamb, I can update you on my third goal of the week. Um, so like since the last podcast, my number one goal was to get to sleeve separation on the Lume. I did that check mark um, to finish the tea room lamb. I did that check mark. The third goal <laughs> doesn't get a check mark. It gets a big um, strike through or an X because I didn't do it yet, but I'm going to do it uh, today or tomorrow or over the weekend. We'll see. I'm going to get I'm going to get it done. Um, but that third goal is to. Uh, crank the two club colorways that Sam of Clockwork Fiber Co. sent me to be cranked. Um, this is the January colorway and it's called Freshly Fallen. You may re recognize it from last week's episode. And this is the February colorway, which is called Winter Sunrise. So I, I mean, obviously these are still in skein form. I have not cranked them into socks yet. So those are carrying over from last week's to-do list to this week's to-do list. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you, if they carry over to next week's to-do list, but I don't really want them to, so I am motivated to get these cranked into socks. I also have another sock commission um, that I need to ship out by March 4th, so I need to set up my sock machine. I have it in a cubby here, stored away and ready to go. Uh, it's just a matter of having the motivation to take it out from a cubby, set it up on the desk and get to cranking. So they, those are the updates on the projects that I mentioned last week. Now I wanna tell you about the projects that I worked on since last week. So not necessarily projects that I told you about before, they just kinda of happened. So uh, the first one is in relation to an acquisition I mentioned last week, I mentioned that I had a package from Treehouse Knits in the mailbox and I hadn't yet, uh, you know, gotten the gumption to go get the mail. And finally, I got the mail. It was actually a funny story. I was wearing my Lento, um, which is knit up in the office yarn, yarn from the office collection from Treehouse Knits. Um, I, I knitted up in people persons, paper people. <laughs> held together on fingering and Surrey. Anyway, I made, I was wearing my Lento when I went to get the mail. And as I was getting to the mailbox, I passed um, these two guys on a walk with their dog. And one of them was wearing a Dunder Mifflin t-shirt. And I said, oh, I love your shirt. And he like, he didn't seem interested in talking. He, he was, like did not take the compliment, um, which was fine. Like, you know, I was, I was accosting him with my presence, you know? So anyway, um, he said thank you, but it wasn't like a, he wasn't inviting more conversation. It's fine. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is he was wearing a Dunder Mifflin t-shirt and I was also wearing an office t-shirt or an office sweater. Um, but he would never know because it's yarn, but it's the office themed. So, uh, that was cool. I got the package, brought it in to the house. Um, and I've already knit up three of the skeins that were in the package. <laughs> So uh, there were five skeins total, and I'll show you um, the other ones when I get to the acquisition sections of section of the podcast. But um, look, 
I made a hat, just lickety split. This uh, hat is the Sacred Sheep hat designed by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Networks. And the reason that I chose this hat and I made this hat and I ordered yarn for this hat is because during the office collection promotional period, Lauren, uh, the owner and dyer behind Treehouse Knits, she posted on her story this pattern idea with this color combo idea. And I was like, sold, you got me. So I purchased it and uh, turned out really, really well. I think Lauren ended up casting on this hat with a different color than um, this red, reddish, purplish, magenta-ish for uh, the brim. But uh, I should probably tell you what these colors are. This is the Money Beats. And then the black color is, there's a lot of beauty in ordinary things. And the lighter color, which you may think is white, but is actually speckled. There's pinks and yellows and greens and orange speckles and black speckles. It's like kind of a rainbow Dalmatian colorway in my mind. Um, but that colorway is called Scranton What? So these three colorways all on Redwood Worsted, which is a 100% superwash merino base from Treehouse Knits. Uh, I made this hat. I cast it on on February 17th. I cast it off on February 19th. It was a really quick knit and I think it helped me pull or it helped pull me out of that slump that I mentioned I was in on Sunday and Monday where I felt like, I don't know, just burdened, heavy laden. I, you know, living with anxiety is just like a mixed bag. You never know what the day will be like. Um, but this really helped me. I think I was overwhelmed with all my whips. I just needed something that I could cast on and have finished quickly and that was engaging and fun and yep, this fit the bill perfectly. Um, so that's a project that I completed from start to finish between last week's episode and this week's episode. And I had my dad try the hat on and it just looked great on him. So. I immediately cast on another one so he could match me. But I did come into a problem um, is that I ran out of the money beats. I have like two inches left of the double brim. And I for both hats, I cast on using a provisional cast on over um, twice sheared sheep knit extension cords. Um, so I'm thinking that I'll thread my needle through these live stitches from the provisional cast on and I will knit those remaining inches with either there's a lot of beauty in ordinary things or with Scranton what you can really see the speckles um, in a lot more of a pronounced way here in the cake form um, because due to the construct construction of this hat this is where the cast on is it seems like the cast on would be on this outside, but this is where the cast on is. So if I were to switch colors now, it would show up um, when my dad is wearing the hat and that's just not gonna work. So uh, I need to figure that out, but I'm kind of confused. Maybe you can provide some insight. I'm kind of confused about this provisional cast on because the stitches are like half a stitch off from where they would be when I want to knit. So if I thread my needles, my knitting needles through these live stitches of the provisional cast on, and I join new yarn and I knit in this direction. So instead of knitting this direction, I would knit this direction and add a few inches to this edge. Wouldn't that just look wonky? How what am I not, what am I not conceptualizing? I think I just need to do it to see it. Maybe you, you know, think this is obvious based on my most recent videos and like my issues with the corn cardigan in my FO diary. I just really need visuals. Like it's really hard for me to conceptualize what the heck this is gonna do. Even though I've been knitting for almost 15 years. Um, so I think I just need to try it. Worst case scenario, six inches of one by one ribbing that I'll frog and start over and cast on with this color. And anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm just gonna try it out. But if you know the answer to this, um, like if I'm about to make a grave mistake, let me know. <laughs> or if I'm like worrying over nothing, let me know. Um, but that's another project that I started. I will do the same um, color pattern with the hat for my dad. So have um, 
the main color be this black color, there's a lot of beauty in ordinary things, and this background color be Scranton What. I have plenty, 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 plenty of yarn left over in both of those colors. Um, I just don't have quite enough left over in the Money Beats because the brim, since it is double thick or a double folded brim, uh, it takes up quite a bit more yarn. See, this is, this is double. So this is about eight inches of one by one ribbing. Dun, da, da, da. Uh, yeah, but all that to say, that's a project that I accomplished this week. And I have to say, I'm really happy with it. I'll have a finished object diary video on it at some point to go into detail on the modifications I did, what I liked, what I didn't like about the pattern. But I'll just give you a spoiler alert now. I like this pattern. It's cushy, it's comfy, it's cute. The pattern is really striking. Um, but that's all I'll say because I have to give you a reason to actually want to watch the FO diary. Hello, Rachel. Um, so, so there we go. We have two sacred sheep hats, one that is an FO, one that is a whip. Another thing that I did this week to kind of, I don't know, I don't know, soldier on through that slump I had a few days ago um, where I was like so overwhelmed with my whips, feeling like everything, like I could work all day on a project and I would only get a few inches in and just feeling like so defeated by that and needing something that, I don't know, something that was like a carrot to chase. Um, I also cast on a swatch of this cabled cardigan. Let me look up what it is called. Um, but basically I took one of my 200 gram hanks of Aaron three ply, uh, wool from Carrie Wool Carrie Woolen Mills. This is a souvenir yarn that I got on the Irish knitting tour. I got two sweater quantities, one in this purple color and another in a green color. Um, but anyway, I was desperate to find a pattern for a cabled cardigan that was size inclusive, had the type of cables I wanted, used Aran weight yarn, um, and was beautiful. And I was at a loss. I could not find a pattern that spoke to me. And now that I'm like, now that now in retrospect, I'm wondering if that was because I was just having kind of a gloomy couple days. Like maybe none of the patterns spoke to me because like I, I was not in a good place. I was not in a good mood. Maybe if I looked at the same patterns today, I would have, I would be like, oh yeah, that looks cute. I don't know. Maybe that's something I can explore on Ravelry later. But anyway, the pattern is called the Winter Sweater by Kate Gagnon Osborne. And it's actually a free pattern on Ravelry. For my swatch, um, I cast on the amount of stitches for one of the front panels. I think this is the right front panel. And uh, I cast on the number of stitches for the smallest size. So basically I was, I'm knitting my swatch the same way I would knit the actual pattern. But since I'm casting on the, the smallest size, uh, it's not like so much of an investment. This is probably the size of a swatch, a little bit bigger, but around the size of a swatch that I would normally do anyway. Um, so cast that on, mess up the cables. They were too small to read on my iPad. The cable charts it was overwhelming me. It was confusing me again. Now I'm wondering, was it really overwhelming or was I just overwhelmed? So I think this was on Saturday or Sunday and I haven't touched it since. I don't know if I will touch it again. I don't know. I might frog it. We'll see. Um, in fact, I probably should because I cast this on when I was like sad and stressed and anxious, and I'm sure that's going to have affected my tension and my gauge. So you know what? Yes, I'm just going to frog this and uh, try again. I have what? Five, four or five skeins or hanks of this, and each of them are 200 grams. So I think I should be more than fine. And if I need to frog what I've already it basically, it'll be fine. We're not going to worry about it, but that is something that I got into this week in my knitting. Um, and then there's two other things to update you on with the project I worked on this week. The next is, well, actually, no, I'm not going to do that one yet. I'm going to tell you about the daft days. This is the pattern that I 
knit during vlogmas this is uh knit up in skein in the stitch hobbit advent colorways um, which is actually perfect timing because uh, all or not all of these colorways, but many of these colorways from the Hobbit Advent that you saw me go through during the month of December, they are going to be available for pre-order in just a few days time. So if this video goes live on the 22nd, on the 24th, so Saturday, I believe at 8 p.m. Um, British time, British standard time, I don't know what the abbreviation is, but 8 p.m. Yorkshire time, England time, UK time, Hobbit colorways will be available for pre-order. So you can enjoy many, not all, but many of these colorways that I knit up in my daft days. Um, but that's not the point of this update. The point of this update is to show you how brave I was. <sighs> be amazed at my bravery. Yesterday, I did so many hard things on this project and not hard because they're technically difficult, hard because they're emotionally daunting, <laughs> emotionally terrifying, um, which is I wove in all the ends. Any ends that you see hanging off, you might be thinking, Rachel, you're a liar, you're a fraud, and we hate you. Obviously, you didn't weave in all the ends. Well, guess what? Yes, I did. Well, except for a couple. But yes, I did, because all of the ones that you see now are new ends which I'll explain in a bit, but I wove in all the ends, such hard work. There are so many ends. And then I picked up the stitches for the button bands and I had to do that twice because there are two button bands. And then I picked up and knit the stitches for the collar. Yes. Amazing. My bravery knows no bounds. So this is what I did yesterday. Now, when it comes to the daft days, I'm a little torn because the fit is not really what I want. I'll be frank with you. The fit is not what I want. It's far too short and it's far too tight. And I'm not sure if that is my error or the pattern error, but rest assured I will be investigating it. Um, but the fit is not what I want. Um, but when I was trying it on last night, I was thinking maybe this would be really cute styled over like a dark turtleneck and it could just be a vest, an open vest. As you can see, maybe I didn't add buttonholes on this, um, these button bands because I didn't want to. And because Leslie um, showed me a video about adding buttonholes after the fact. So I figure if I really want buttonholes, I can either follow the, t the tutorial Leslie sent me, or I can use snap buttons, which don't require buttonholes. Also, side note, I got a comment on a, on a older video recently saying, who's this Leslie you're talking about? This Leslie is Knit California. You should follow her on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, she's so good at YouTube. So go check her podcast out. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's who Leslie is. She's my bestie. She's awesome. So if you're wondering who Leslie is and you've been too afraid to ask, some brave soul did it for you. And now you know, Leslie is Nick California. Check her out. She's the best. Um, yeah. So anyway, I didn't add buttonholes. Thinking it could be a nice open vest over a turtleneck. And that meant that I could pick up stitches and just finish the sleeves with some ribbing and not do long sleeves like the pattern calls for. But I don't know yet. I don't know. So the plan is right now for me to uh, block this, give it a full wet block and then see how it fits. And then I'm going to decide what I want to do about the sleeves. So I'm kind of happy that this is where the situation is because it defers <laughs> the decision and the work for my future self. So she'll know what to do. I am confident. Um, but that is a project that I did yesterday. All that work I did yesterday. At the beginning of the day yesterday, this was just um, like, had a million ends that weren't woven in, had no button band, had no collar, and now it has all those things. So uh, just a day of work, which, you know, seems like small potatoes, but over the weekend, it, it seems like an insurmountable thing. Um, but I feel good about my whips again. I feel in a much better spot. Um, so my daft days did get worked on this week. Okay. Now I'll show you the other project that I worked on this week, which has to do with some, uh, promotional information. So I saved this for last. 
so I can just transition into the acquisitions portion of the podcast. Um, but this is my latest whip, or I don't know if it's really my latest, but it's it's a newer edition. I started it this past week. This is the Colette Pullover by Sari Norland. It's this beautiful cabled pullover, and I'm knitting it up in Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. Okay, so I just grabbed two of the skeins to show you. Selena sent me some skeins from her Bridgerton collection, which is launching on March 1st. Um, so I got to see the full lineup of her Bridgerton collection. It's really, really beautiful. It just screams Bridgerton. So if you've ever seen Bridgerton, you know there's a lot of pastels, a lot of soft colors, just like really, it like calming is not the right word, but it's kind of like, I don't know, invigoratingly soothing. <laughs> I don't know, but but like that's what her colorways are. They they really evoke the Bridgerton vibe, and the colorway that I chose for a sweater quantity for her to send me is called I Burn For You. And as you can see, it's this really beautiful, beautiful, delicate pastel variegated colorway. So I'll hold it up close here. You can see that there's creams, purples, pinks, and from far away, I think that it looks like a tonal or very close to a tonal, especially on the mohair. Looks very close to a tonal. But as you uh, look up closer, you can see the, uh, the variegation come out to play and it's just, just stunning. So like I said, I'm holding a skein of fingering weight with a skein of mohair. So this is the Romanticy sock for fingering. It's 75 25 superwash merino nylon blend 425 meters per 100 grams i don't know off the top of my head how many yards 400 425 meters are um, so you can look it up if that's important to you and uh, then the mohair the base is called magical mohair it's 72 percent kid mohair 28 percent silk and 420 meters per 50 grams. Okay, so you can see that the fingering weight skein, the variegation is much more pronounced, it's much more noticeable, and it's much more, uh, you know, the colors are not as blended together, whereas the mohair, it's much more, um, pfft, I got mohair in my mouth, it's much more uh, blended together. So by holding these two strands at the same time, it creates this fabric that is so gorgeous. It looks like a tonal from far away. Like it's this really delicate, light lilac um, color. And then close up, you can see that variegation. It's just so stunning. So, so stunning. So I'm really liking this. I'm on the back panel. I think I need about mm, maybe three more inches on the back panel. So uh, I don't know if I will need to finish this whole cable repeat before I check that box and I'm able to pick up the um, left front and right front stitches. Um, but yeah, I've been working on that to help Selena promote her Bridgerton collection. So that yarn was sent to me at no cost to me. And I also was sent a sock set. So this is the A Beautiful Lady Who Cannot Dance. It seems to be a crime. It seems a crime against nature. That's the variegated of this sock set. And then the tonal, this nice pink, is called Be Mine Forever. So this is an example of the sock sets that will be available during the Bridgerton collection. Um, the Romanticy sock is a three ply sock weight and it shows off the colors really, really beautifully, really, really well. But those beautiful skeins are not all that I need to show you or tell you about with the Bridgerton collection. Um, I have a little missive here, a little note from Selena, um, with some really good info, uh, particularly if like me, you are shopping from the US. So Selena, I don't remember if I've said or not, uh, of Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. is based out of Norway. So obviously, if you're shopping from the US, you might be thinking, uh, that's a lot of international shipping, so I don't know if I can pay that, so you'll wanna listen up to this. Uh, basically, uh, 
there's free shipping for international orders over uh, 2,500 Norwegian Krohn, which is approximately $235. And you don't need a code for that. So if you're gonna get a sweater quantity or a couple sweater quantities, you will get free shipping automatically. Um, and I should say, you know, sweater quantity depends. If you are um, very small sized, you might need more than a sweater quantity. But for me, I would hit 235 for one sweater quantity. Uh, no problem, I could do that in my sleep. Uh, so anyway, yeah, free shipping. You don't need to stress about that if you are a US shopper shopping from Selena in Norway. And it might actually behoove you to do that if you're in the market for hand dyed yarn because the exchange rate works in our favor, those of us in the US. So the cost per, ska per skein is quite a bit lower than if you were buying um, from a stateside indie dyer. So keep that in mind. The second thing that I want to relay to you from this missive, uh, which is probably maybe even more important than what I just shared about free shipping, and that is that Selena has an anti-fat tax. So to get that, you can use the code anti-fat tax in all caps, no spaces, anti-fat tax, and that gives you a 10% discount on six or more skeins. So uh, you can stack those, the free shipping and the anti-fat tax, I'm assuming, since the free shipping doesn't require a code. Uh, so you can really get some bang for your buck with this Bridgerton collection. That is launching on March 1st. Like I said, I'm not sure what time of day. Um, so just keep an eye out on Selena's Instagram page. Her handle is through the wardrobe yarn co and I'll link that in the video description box. Okay, so now, that I've talked about my Colette pullover and I've talked about my acquisition of the Bridgerton yarn, we're officially transitioned into the acquisition section of the podcast. So I told you about my Treehouse Knits office yarn that I made into a hat, but that's not the only thing that was in that acquisition package. I also got two skeins of There's a Lot of Beauty in Ordinary Things on Truffula Cashmere. This is a colorway that I thought might work for my palette of colors I've been collecting for the Instant Crush by Hohi Locatelli. Um, ultimately, I don't think I'm gonna use this, so I need to find another use for these or de-stash them, or I'm not sure, uh, but I don't think I'll be using these for my Instant Crush, but all the same, they are now part of my collection and my stash. The next acquisition arrived yesterday, or actually it arrived a few days ago, but I just never went to the mailbox. Uh, but my dad went to the mailbox yesterday and he gave me a package with this skein. This is Creator of Beauty from Cesium Yarn from the Cabin Collection. This skein is very, very special to me because it's inspired by a bouquet of flowers my grandmother made. Uh, my grandmother is the original creator of beauty and hence the name of this skein. Um, if you're not familiar, the Cabin Collection is a collaborative collection that I brought about with Cesium Yarn. I mean, they did all the heavy lifting. Kat and Penny Strickland, the owners of Cesium Yarn, uh, Kat does all the dyeing, Penny does the admin stuff. Um, but basically I sent them inspiration pictures from my family cabin that my great grandfather built. Uh, it's so special to me, so special to my family. Uh, and Kat and Penny took those photos and turned them into yarn inspired by the very special places and the very special things around our family cabin. So this is Creator of Beauty and I just love it. I think I need a cardigan out of it. Obviously this one skein won't make a cardigan, but one day I will be getting a sweater quantity of Creator of Beauty and making a beautiful cardigan. Um, and I actually can do that sooner rather than later because tomorrow for you, two days from now for me filming, but uh, if this video goes live on Thursday, the 22nd, on Friday, the 23rd, the Cabin Collection will be available as dyed to order from the Cesium Yarn website. So what that means is it's not an in-stock update, meaning there isn't a limited amount. You don't have to rush there. You don't have to worry about being cart jacked, but it's also not a pre-order. So that means that, um, you know, it's not a pre-order. <laughs> it, 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 it's not. They uh, basically have 
um, a set turnaround time for Died to Order and it will be um, available in their Died to Order library. So you don't have to just get Cabin Collection in their Died to Order, um, but you certainly can get as much as you want. Um, so on Friday, February 23rd, that will be available. If you have been wanting for the cap or waiting for the Cabin Collection to come back, your wait is over. It is back on Friday, February 23rd. All right, so that does it for the acquisition section of the podcast. Now I want to talk to you about my goals for the week. I think I've probably already mentioned them, but I'm just going to mention them again really briefly. Goal number one, finish the back panel of my Colette pullover. I'm only a couple inches away. I can definitely do it. Number two, crank these dang socks that I didn't crank last week for Sam of Clockwork Fiber Co. So that's my second goal for the week. And number three is to cast on this purple and pink and white and gray sweater that um, Sam dyed up th this yarn for me. I broke my basket the other day, by the way. Whatever. Okay, so that's... <laughs> This looks ridiculous. That's my third goal for the week is to cast on my, um, what Sam and I are referring to as hearts sweater, my heart sweater. Um, so three goals, finish back panel of Colette, crank clockwork fiber company socks and cast on my clockwork fiber company sweater. All right. So we've gone through a lot. I told you about, uh, updates on the projects I mentioned last week, told you about the projects I have been working on this week acquisitions, goals, yada, yada, yada. I want to end today's podcast with a quick plug for my Irish knitting tour. So if you're new here, you may not be familiar. So I want to give you the opportunity to become familiar with the Irish knitting tour. Basically, it's the best week and a half of your life or weekend a couple days of your life. Uh, in October, I'm going to Ireland with my mom and with Leslie of Knit California and with a bunch of other great people who have signed up to join us. Um, this is gonna be the second annual Irish Knitting Tour. The first one we had this last October in 2023. It was an amazing experience. I cannot wait to do it again. If you wanna watch the playlist, or maybe it'll be on this side, if you wanna watch the playlist that goes over a recap of the Irish Knitting Tour to get an idea of what it is. I'll link it here up above, but I just wanna tell you it's incredible. I cannot wait to go back. We're gonna spend nine nights in Ireland. We're going to four-star and five-star hotels. We're uh, attending knitting workshops led by experts, going to historical sites, going to Irish working woolen mills, Irish sheep for farms, um, <laughs> forms, um, it's just amazing. It's a great time. It's so special to be surrounded by people who are passionate about the same thing that you are, in this case, knitting. So think of it as a nine night tour with uh, like-minded people who knit for fun and knit together and learn about knitting and wool and all these good things in the most picturesque fall autumnal location. Um, we're going back in October and it's just beautiful. If you are like me, I live in Baton Rouge. I, I'm in Oregon right now, but I live in Baton Rouge and I don't get to experience fall as much as I would like to. So going to Ireland in October really scratches that itch for me. I get to wear my knits every day. I get to show off my knits to people who appreciate and know, you know, what the pattern I'm wearing is. And it's just so fun. We have a few spaces left. I would love to see them fill up. Uh, so if you've been on the fence and you have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any and all that you have. Uh, but I just can't wait. I just can't wait. And if you want to join us, you can click the link in the video box description, video description box. Why do I always say video box description? The video description box is where you will find the information and you can get all the info on the itinerary, the places we're going to see, the things we're going to do, uh, all the items you can look forward to. And of course, the information on pricing, etc. So if you'd like to be a part of that, or if you'd like to know more, check out the link in the video description box, video, video description box. I said it correctly. Okay. So anyway, that's all for this video. Uh, thanks for bearing with me as I figure out podcasting. I'm having fun with it. I'm glad that I waited a few days to do this because it just didn't seem doable. It didn't seem fun on Sunday or on Monday or frankly yesterday on Tuesday, but now we did it. 
We did it, folks. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and hit that notification bell to be notified of my next upload. Last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.